Welcome to Unleash Your Courage. I'm your host, Angela Schroeder. Whether you're listening to us live on Turf Step Radio, in the Facebook group, or by recording, we are so glad that you are here and super excited to have Dan here with us today. Welcome, Dan. Hey, Angela. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be on. Yes. So we're going to dive into all kinds of fun stuff today. But before we do, why don't you tell the audience just a little bit about you? Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Dan Fleischer. I'm the co-founder of HireBus. Um, HireBus is a software platform and behavioral assessment with a really simple mission, which is helping you, the small business owner in the trades, get the right people in the right seats in your business. Um, it's, it's This is like my passion and it's all, I don't know, the world works in mysterious ways because I started my career as a school teacher and then I worked for a school district doing the strategy work and then I got an MBA and worked as a management consultant to pay for that because that was expensive. But then I uh, operated a coaching business that I'm sure a lot of folks here are familiar with called Conquer. So Brandon Vaughn and I uh, ran that business for a while together and we coached thousands of home service business owners. And the big problem everyone was facing is I can't grow a service business without the right people. I can have like awesome marketing systems. I can have awesome finance systems. I can have awesome admin systems. But if I don't have systems around people, I can only scale to so much. So we'd see people getting to like that six figure mark one and a half million mark and kind of puttering out. And so uh, we built this platform and tool and services program to help people break through that and get to where they want to go. So really passionate about it and excited to talk about what we've learned from helping so many businesses get really strong people and build systems to continuously get those people in their business. Mm. I love that you, you know, talked a little bit about your journey throughout and and it is always interesting but we know that you know all the pieces come together the journey and our history of things that that we learn the things um you know now your history in teaching and and i had teaching from being a, a dance studio owner go right into coaching you know that you learned those teaching skills and then coaching and now being able to teach business owners about those principles of people so our history it's, just gives us building blocks. I know it's building blocks. I sometimes call it like a bouquet. It's like I can take that flower from teaching, oh. that flower from management consulting, and it makes a nice medley and a mix. It's not just one tone. It's all these different experiences that make what you find your like passion and energy for really, really powerful. Mm, I love that. I love it describing it. Yeah, steal that. Steal well. the bouquet. <laughs> I will. I absolutely am going to steal that. Well, you used the right people in the right seats, and I'm excited to dive into that today because that is so important, um, and that really is the foundation and something um, I'm passionate about, too. We just kind of, you and I get to do uh, similar things in, in different arenas, um, but it is all about first the right people, um, getting the right people on the bus, and then finding them the right seat. So you can tell in your voice you're passionate about it. And yeah, tell us a little bit about the space and what's what's going on. Yeah. So I'll start by talking about the right people in the right seats. Uh, you as a business owner, there's, there's like a lot of work that we all do as business owners to try to attract people to our business because we know to grow, we need people. And the thing that's true is there's a place for everyone, but they might not be the right person for your business. So we need some sort of tool that helps us figure out if they're right for you. There's crazy studies done. Um, the, the, my favorite study on hiring is that people, and this is true, if this was done with Fortune 500 companies, mm -hmm. people make a hiring decision within the first 30 seconds on average, it's like 32 actually, of seeing someone in an interview. And what that tells me is not that we are this like, omniscient, brilliant beings that can tell if someone's a great fit. It's that we use biases. We use, we yeah. don't use the right data to make decisions on hiring. So we yeah. don't know if that person's actually right for us. And often what happens is we see in this, I've done this a lot and I still have to really work on it is we see nepotism in hiring. Like I hire someone that I like because they're like me. And what that means is you get a team of people that are like you that doesn't. Yes that doesn't push you out of your comfort zone. It doesn't round you. It doesn't make you a better team. It just gives a lot of people that sing the same note. Mm. And so um, 
what Hire Bus does and what, what I'm passionate about is figuring out how can you get more like concrete data to make hiring a system? How can you have someone without spending a ton of time because we're very busy, how can you get information on them to understand, are they gonna compliment you? Are they gonna be the right fit for this role? Are they gonna compliment the person they're in a truck with? Are they gonna compliment the other uh, uh, CSRs in the office, right? And so like, and, you know, we can get into the details of it, but what we've done is we've, we've worked with an assessment that's been around for 30 years, built by clinical psychologists, taken millions of times, and we've taken all the data and mapped it to the trades instead of to, you know, Fortune 500 companies or large universities, because we deserve the same or better tools than what they have. And now what we can do is with a five or 10 minute assessment, you can get a readout. Is this person complimentary to you? Is this person the right fit for the role? And so you're not going into that. You're not hiring someone like, yeah, they showed up and they, I got along with them. Great. And I think they're a great culture fit. Sure. That's important. You can still do that. But now mm -hmm. you know, do they have the level of order that's needed to be a production manager? Do they have the level of military leadership needed to be a production manager? Something that you can't really suss out in an interview. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you brought up so many good points. Um, <laughs> and that we have to take ourselves out of the equation. Um, you pointed that out, and that's something people didn't do. It's something certainly I didn't do and grew in leadership is we are just naturally attracted to people that we like. And like you said that, um, and we've tested this out several times in our own and working with virtual assistants, you get people and, and you do a group interview and you just naturally gravitate towards like, Oh, I like you. I like your energy. And we you dive, know, you know, <laughs> okay, it's, it's, yeah, it's natural um, psychology and too many people hire and, and put people in seats just because they they want to see they're at a level of leadership that they want to see more of themselves. <laughs> it's it's so true. And like it takes humility to recognize that because what's it's tricky, right? Like, why wouldn't I want to hire more people like like if you for the folks listening, they're all running successful businesses. Yeah, you probably would do well if you had a few more of yourself out there. Right. Like if you could clone yourself three times, the business would skyrocket. Now, that can be true, but also could it be better if you're complimentary? I actually had a conversation with a, an electrical company. They're pretty big. They have 45 techs, um, 30 plus trucks. So they're 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 big. They've been around for over 30 years. And what was interesting is they had all their employees take hire bus. And they came to me and they said, Dan, my best sales guy scored a one as a higher bus outside sales. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, nothing's perfect. Let's see, maybe this is more data that we could collect for the test to make it better, yada, yada, yada. And we went through. And one thing we noticed when going through their whole organization was that everyone across the board in the organization scored low in a benchmark we call aggression. And that has like a little bit of a negative connotation, but it's like a psychological term that the folks that developed the test use. Basically, yeah. it's like, do you go for a close? Are you going to push? To, to get something done quickly in a way that like might be a little off-putting, but it's really important in sales. Yeah. And so we talked about the role. Is it is it true like outbound sales role or what? What is it? But what we saw is across their whole organization, everyone scored low in aggression. Everyone. No. Oh. And so I went to one of their leadership meetings. There was six people in the meeting, and we talked about. It. I was like, "You all, as an organization, have to make a decision. Do you want?" to hire people that score low in aggression? Is that like core to your culture as a business? Is that what makes you all tick? Or would you benefit from having some sales folks who are higher in aggression that can push close rates faster? And when we dug into their close rate, it actually wasn't that high, it was in the 30s. And so the so what of all this is a business that's very successful, right? They've got, mm -hmm. they've got 30 trucks in the road and mechanicals, they're, they're doing well they are at a 30% close rate and they're going to go hire some folks that score a little bit higher in aggression. And now we can test and understand, is that going to push their close rate up? Is that going to have an impact on culture? But without data, without a, a resource, you're just sitting there guessing and you're going to hire people that are like you and you like, and it, and it might allow you to hum along, but these are the little things that make you uncomfortable. And all of a sudden your close rate goes from 30 to 45%. Woo. 
50 trucks on the road in, in, in a few months if that happens. Right. So, um, I don't know that story just popped up because I talked to them last week and it, it shows the power of the data versus instinct. Exactly. Um, and there is so much in that versus the instinct. Like we, we already talked about and proved that our instincts are wrong. And so it takes the humility, removing your ego. It takes that level of leadership to take yourself out of the equation and use data before you put people in front of you. Then you can decide based on energy, but um, you know, then that's what the final interview process I think is, is for. But the beginning is to take yourself out of it and only put the right people in front of you. Otherwise, you know, you mentioned um, the different skill sets, like your level of order and um, the leadership, like otherwise you are going to be attracted to people that don't have the capacity for the role that you want. And if they don't have the capacity, no matter how much you like them, you'll never mold, you'll never mold them. You're going to beat your head against a wall. You're only mm -hmm. going to grow like that, like you said. Um, but not even, I think one of the most important, I'm going all over the place in here. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's such a, it's a topic that you're just like, whoa, we could talk yeah. about this hiring, growing your teams, self-coaching. Like we have some yeah. clients that don't even use it with their teams. They just use it with themselves, which I love. So it is a topic that can expand really quickly because it's so nuanced. Uh, um, because if you don't get what people don't understand, I think is that capacity equation. If you're not using the data and you put people in front of you that honestly don't have the capacity for the role, it, it doesn't just affect the business in your growth of how the capacity to do their role. It's you as a business owner are beating your head against a wall. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the right people in the right seats, the emotional drain on yourself in trying to, as a business owner, you just think you can be into existence. Like I'm going to fix you. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good point. I actually, like, I don't, we don't talk about this enough, Angela. And I think you, you've, called something out that's valuable and we can all I mean I it's it's like I have goosebumps a little bit thinking about it with team my own team past teams is like you're setting yourself up for failure if they're not in the right seat to begin with and there's only so much you can do with someone and that frustration compounds that's such a fascinating point and like what is the value of that big big that is mind-blowing and it does give me because I have I've just gone through this scenario. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of visionary business owners also besides, okay, we know there is data and psychology around we pick people that we like, right? Mm -hmm. So then we like them and we want them to like us. <laughs> and we, um, I, I mean, I find this among lots of business owners, like we care about you. Like I, I love you. I want you on my, I'm going to take care yeah. of you on my team. And so we, we don't want to move them to the right seat because we just care about it so much and think about them that I think that is the biggest blocker. And it was for me at every area of growth. Mm. Is I brought in somebody I liked and was just like, I'll just take care of you. Um, and it was bad Which for them. Wing, shelter you from growth and tough, tough conversations and tough situations. Yeah. And it was bad for me and it's bad for them because they're they're not put in an opportunity to be in the right seat in a capacity where they can grow either. But by far the the most limiting thing was not just that the company could grow. It's what it was doing to me and my energy and my capacity to lead because so much of my energy was focused on trying to fix the people on the bus. It's 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 a really interesting concept. One, one thing that's popped out of this and a lot of it's just organic, like, you know, we we're, we're solving a problem and then people come to us with other things. We build features, but one of them, one of the features that we built that solves this exact problem is called like a role finder. And basically what we do is yeah. you can take it. So when you take a hire bus, you take it for a specific role. So if you're hiring for a, a sales rep, there's a sales rep benchmark that's built by data. So you can see what are the key behaviors of a sales rep that makes them successful. You bring them on, um, but a lot of people have hired people before hire bus and they have a, a tech that's been around for forever, an office manager that's been around forever. So what we did is we made it so you can have them take hire bus and then we can just tell you, actually this person's like really well suited for sales. Or one mm. thing we see a lot 
is actually your sales guys are really customer service oriented. And so if they're not successful, maybe it's because they're not in the right seat. And we've seen a lot of people find like happiness by switching roles based on this data. And it creates a really good conversation because you're not like, hey, Angela, you know, I'm switching a role because you're not doing well. You're saying, hey, Angela, look at this data. It seems like there might be a good uh, positive opportunity here. What do you think? Now you have a conversation about it and you can switch roles so you can take care of those people that you know you obviously care about um, and want to do well by and you can get them in the right seat. Mm -hmm. And then if it doesn't work out, you know, you can work with them to like get a different job or whatever it may be, but at least you have a positive step if there is a good opportunity for them in this little like role finder feature we yeah. built, which has been pretty oh, cool. I love that. Taking yeah. the emotion out of it with data. Well, we have to take our first commercial break and Let's we'll be right it. back and talk more about that. Creating art from darkness. For over 20 years, Cast Lighting has designed and manufactured the world's most durable, energy efficient, and technically advanced landscape lighting products available at astonishingly affordable prices. Cast offers an all encompassing line of products with everything you need to get the job done. Cast Landscape, their most durable product, is best in class, low voltage landscape lighting made of solid bronze with integrated and drop in LED technology. These fixtures are built to endure the most demanding environments. Source Lighting, a new division by Cast, is your source for professional grand landscape lighting made of durable brass, offering both integrated and drop-in LED technology and backed by CAST, the world's most durable outdoor lighting. CAST Lighting gives you innovative, state-of-the-art, old-world craftsmanship with tomorrow's technology. Visit their website at cast-lighting.com today. That's cast-lighting.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, no one rocks like Turfs Up Radio. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Cress is leading the transition from gas-powered lawn equipment for professional operations with the introduction of the industry's first truly game-changing innovation in battery-powered OPE. With the Cress 8-Minute Cyber System, professional landscapers can now replace their messy gas-powered equipment without sacrificing performance, power, or runtime. The 8-Minute Cyber System allows for Cress-made 60-volt batteries to fully charge in 8 minutes or less, just enough time for a water break. Complemented by a full line of equipment benchmarked against gas-powered products, landscapers can finally take charge of their business and make the switch to battery. For more information, visit Cress.com. Visit Cress.com. Having issues with your maintenance schedule? Want better routing and ability to track your vehicles when they leave the shop? Do you want to reduce your liability exposure with your vehicles that are moving billboards on the road? GPS Fleet Consulting uses cloud-based dash cam monitoring and can easily track your vehicle maintenance using real odometer readings. GPS Fleet Consulting can also assist you with live phone support and email support with guaranteed same-day responses. Yes, same-day responses. Stop wondering where your trucks are and start managing your fleet with GPS Fleet Management Systems. For more information, visit gpsfleetconsulting.com. That's gpsfleetconsulting.com. And we are back. So there's two areas to dive into of taking the emotion out of it. And that's what I love. Like we're, we're, completely taking the emotion out of hiring, um, promoting, redefining a role and using data that we know what's worked. So it makes those uncomfortable conversations have something behind them, I think, whether it's from the, from the start or from a repurpose. And one thing I do want to try, like, I, don't, I think there should be some emotion in hiring. Like this is a person that you're working with. I think one thing we've I think the main thing we've done really well and we build hiring funnels for people so we manage all the hiring process until they interview but like i never want it's important that you do have an emotional connection with someone but i think you need to make sure you're primed with all the information so you don't just have it be like 95 percent emotion five percent data it should be a more balanced data and emotion uh, percentage and we're just all so heavily skewed on emotion and bias versus data so like what we really try to do is how do we give you as much data and information as possible 
while taking zero of your time to make a really good hiring decision. That's kind of like what I wake up in the morning and think about is how can I give you, Angela, like as much information as possible in an automated self-reliant way that you don't have to think about so that when you get to that interview, you're just like, oh yeah, I know all this stuff about the person. I know the questions to ask to poke to see if what uh, areas I really want to assess. And then I can make the decision based on me, Angela, which might be different than what I make. And that's good because it's your yeah. business, not my business. You're right. There is that personal part. And it kind of goes back to how I um, framed it. And I would say is don't let yourself get the wrong person put in front of you. Like the emotion mm. is after that. But if you use, if you're using the tool and the data first, then you don't put the wrong people in front of you to get to have that emotional mix with. Yeah, I'm sure you see that all the time. I mean, I know your your um, agency is growing. And so you probably like see the joys and that works well and some of the pain when it doesn't because of all the folks you're helping staff. Like it's powerful if you can get that right. Yes. And I would say just even for myself. And that's what I've learned about my internal team. <laughs> yeah. Leadership to me, like don't put the wrong person in front of me. <laughs> um you know, don't let me, yeah, become attached to and have the energy draw, like, give me everybody that has the capacity that has the data behind it, that they have the capacity to be the person, the right person in the right seat. And then we'll see if the energy aligns. Yeah, yeah. Save me from myself. I'm I've, I'm the same thing. I, I, I don't. I'm like, all right, you're all under my wings. Now you're all in my little family. Let's go. So I gotta make sure you're the right people. <laughs> lesson audience is safe yeah. from us. <laughs> um, and we laugh about it but it is so true in this space um, mm -hmm. people are our biggest asset and in, in commodity in business and um, you have to get it right and and that does involve saving you from yourself yeah so tell me about some um, trends and maybe things that you're seeing besides this um, and we could go forever on the assessment part and it fascinates me and the data and um, and just the replacement and stuff like that. But tell me also about, yeah, some trends going on in you yeah. know attracting talent, attracting the right people to the right seats. Yeah, it's a really good question, Angela, because a lot of what we're talking about is like what I think of as qualifying. So once you've attracted, how do you qualify? How do you know if they're going to be the right fit for the role you're hiring or your business? But in order for that to, in order for you to be able to qualify, a lot of folks are like, what are you talking about? I don't, I can't qualify. If someone shows up to an interview, I have to mm. hire them, right? And so to even get to the qualification problem, you need to attract a big enough top of funnel so that you can have the ability to qualify people and say no to people. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting things going on. And we do what's called hiring funnels. So we build systems for home service businesses and uh, folks in the trades. And uh, okay, where to start? So so first of all, like the first thing we try to do is make sure that you get as much top of funnel activity as possible. And what I mean by top of funnel activity is, is as many applicants coming in as possible. And so we have a philosophy, which is good hiring is great marketing or great hiring is great marketing, whatever you want to call it, right? Like, Hiring and marketing are basically the same thing. You want to attract people and you want to have as little friction in your funnel as possible, top of funnel. And you can you can add for qualified people later. And so where that starts is with job ads and where you post. And one thing that's really fascinating is we've seen up to a 25x difference for the same exact job ad with the same exact spend on Indeed based on just region. And so we've we, we actually have like built a prompt. I don't know if you guys do giveaways, but I'm happy to give these AI uh, prompts so that you can create custom job ads for your business. It takes like five minutes and all of a sudden it spits out um, really good job ads based on like wow. what you say your business is, what the services are, what the role is. It's cool. It's it, We use it in, our, um, uh, in the funnels we build for folks. But what we've noticed is there can be a 25X like response rate based on location. So what we've started to do is we test and just like marketing, like sometimes your message really hits and sometimes it doesn't. And so what we've realized is specifically in Seattle area and in like LA, Southern California area, we have to have like very different types of job ads where we need to put like pay and some of the some of the uh, blocking and tackling things first versus on in the mid Atlantic and in Northeast, we do a lot of like 
who you are and a lot more kind of punchy advertising stuff first, language first. And that's what's working right now. And it's probably going to change. But because now we have all this data, we're able to quickly see, oh, wow, those ads in LA, like in the LA area were not working well. And so we've had to cycle those and figure out what it is. And it seems like right now in that area, getting to kind of like the brass tax is working. So we're riding that for a little bit until we change. So job ad copy is really important. Making sure it's like marketing and job advertisement and not job requirements is something that I think a lot of people know. But knowing that it's not just, you can't just set it and forget it. You need to always be updating and iterating on it because the, the algorithms and trends change so much on Indeed. So that's like one of the first things that's been top of mind, especially um, this fall going into winter. Yeah, it is amazing what AI does in in all over our world and everything. And I think a lot of people are just thinking about it in marketing and the correlation of um, you know, the hiring and what you're putting out there for hiring is marketing. And that people are hanging on to what that made me think of is what a lot of people are hanging on to in their own marketing that they're like, Oh, I it can just be in my voice. Um, that their ego is stuck on that too. Like I can write a really great ad. Only I can describe my company. The reality is if you are not using AI, it does not meet the algorithm. Like you really can't. <laughs> it's it's changing all the time and you are losing the game if you are not using the tools that are out there to help you win. Yeah, it's pretty, it, what's really interesting about it is like, so what we do is we just ask you a few questions. We'll actually have it like read your website, what tone you want to write in. But I think what's really powerful about using AI is it can, it can get a lot of iterations of it quickly. So it's like, yes. all right, any new customer for our funnel, we instantly have three job ads that we build. And so when like version A isn't performing as well as B, we boost B. And then if like C is better than B, we boost C. And then we build three more based off C. So it just allows us to like really quickly iterate and test. Yeah. Um, and adjust. And, and adjust. And it's, it's kind of scary good. I don't know. It's like scary accurate. It makes me feel a little useless how good some of the generative AI stuff is. It is, it is scary. It is scary good. And I thought it was good before. And then when this update new version came out last week, um, we have been loading tons of content in that it lets you load more in. So like with me, we could, you know, mm. load my whole book quick and easy and learn my voice. And it is scary. <laughs> what are the chances that you are an AI right now? And I'm just been fooled for however long you've been on the phone. Like what, what are the chances? <laughs> That's probably, <laughs> that's soon. but I'm going to admit to being a person that was stuck in that, that I was like, I'm an author. I can write, I can write yeah. my own stuff. I'm going to write my own blogs. I'm going to, this is my voice. Um, and I mean, that's just another takeaway in this of saving yourself. Um, mm. You know, it can be your voice, but it's just your voice a little bit better and your voice in tuned to, um, the way people listen. It's a pretty cool thing in some ways where you think about it, like your voice is so powerful, right? Like you started businesses, you've written a book, you obviously have a following here. And now you can have a tool that allows you to create more leverage for your voice. Like I think of um, uh, Naval Ravikant wrote like one of my favorite books and it's all about like, what are the ways to have leverage and mm. technology, media, uh, finance and people is the last one. And, and his argument is people is actually the hardest one, but I think it's actually the most important one. Yeah. So I disagree with him a little bit there, but if now all of a sudden, like think how much leverage you can have for your voice and how much leverage a business owner can have where instead of the 8 PM, Oh my gosh, I got to update my Facebook ads or send out a newsletter. Oh, like that pain that we've all felt now you can build a system around it and you can do it effectively or writing a job ad. You don't have to do that anymore. Like we can give you this tool and, and you can use it or, you know, we can do it for you. So there's a lot of cool things that save, that can save us time. And I think as business owners, we have a lot of leverage in this space. Oh, absolutely. Well, we have to take one more commercial break and we'll come back and talk about more of that because, you know, you went into making those quick, quick adjustments and testing and, and all the things that business owners don't, do when they do it themselves so yeah let's do it okay we'll be right back have you considered artificial turf 
It's great for areas with high precipitation, which means no mud after a heavy rain and no more mowing wet grass. Today's artificial turf is made using recycled materials and helps to reduce water consumption in areas of drought. Turf Envy's artificial turf is constructed of quality raw materials, safe for pets, humans, and our environment. With decades of experience, our staff can help with support, training, and product education to give you confidence when estimating a project for a potential customer. Learn more at TurfNVUSA.com today. You're listening to Turf's Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Turf's Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hey everybody, Wayne Vols, the Prophet, your host of Profit Time here on Turf's Up Radio. If you listen to my show, you know I'm all about profit. As an industry, profit is something we fail to meet most of the time. If you're working hard but not seeing the results that you deserve, Profits Unlimited is here to help. We offer processes and systems designed specifically to make your company more successful, more profitable, and certainly more efficient. When you're ready to take your company to the next level, reach out to me at Profits Are us.com that's profits a r e u s.com and don't forget to turn into profit time every monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home did you know that nonprofit project evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn landscape and snow removal services we call it green care and snow care for troops If you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. Busy work burning you out? Kick it to the curb and do more of what you love. How? With Landscape Management Network to spend less time creating estimates, tracking crews, doing job costing, managing invoices and payroll, and more. FYI, the average LMN contractor spends 50% less time doing payroll, increases profits, and lands more jobs. Put an end to burnout. Visit golmn.com slash turfsup. That's golmn.com forward slash turfsup to get started. And we're back. Oh, so many thoughts racing through my mind in commercial break. Um, Because I know this people place and helping business owners get it right is something that we're both passionate about. And it just, there's just so many avenues to it that I'm, I'm like all lighting up. My ADD brain is like, what about yeah, this? We talk about squirrel brain. Let's do it. I have the same... It's not a problem. I have the same skill, squirrel brain, I like to call it. <laughs> there we go. I could talk for hours. Um, so going off of the last conversation, what I thought about when we were talking about attracting, right? So there's the mm. three points we've talked about so far in, um, in the areas of the funnel of attracting the right people and then qualifying those people that get in front of you and how you help business owners with both of those and getting both of those pieces of the puzzle are right. And I really could see that the second one, the qualify, like I've been there, learned that lesson myself, only put the right people in front of me. But when we were talking about like AI writing in your voice and um, using AI, it occurred to me and that then I was joking about saving, saving you from yourself. (laughs) Um, But a lot of times we were probably writing job ads to get people that we, to get those wrong people. We were attracting the wrong people. Again, we were, we were doing it wrong in the second step, but we were also doing it wrong in, in the first place because we mm-hmm. were trying to attract people that would be attracted to our words and our voice and trying to pack people like us. And we need help doing, writing the things that attract the people with the right capacity. So true. And there's like, three levels of this that I see all the time. Level one is, is writing a job ad from the perspective of a business owner. And that's like, I see it a lot and it it makes sense because it's like, this is the 11th thing on your to-do list. It's late. You're just trying to get it out there. So you start, we're a blah, blah, blah company. Here are the job requirements apply Mm -hmm. the next level. And that doesn't attract people that attracts, that attracts desperate people that don't have a job. It doesn't attract really good folks that are going to switch to you and will stay. The next level is making it about 
the candidate. So like who you are as a candidate is front and center, why we as a business are really valuable. Um, that's level two. And then level three, and this is where, this is where I'm in it. I'm scrolling out here for a second. I'm seeing this now on, on a lot of stuff we're doing, but I'm also seeing it for a lot of like seasonal services, like light hanging and stuff like that, that we're doing for folks um, is really winning. And what level three is, is you not only make it about them, but you make it about their progression. And you mm. might say, Dan, how can you make it a progression for someone who's joining for a, a seasonal service? Well, there's, there's not a single person that you want in your business that all they truly, truly want is to show up and then leave and never see you again. You want someone to enter an interview process with you and hopefully enter working with you, having a vision of themselves there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so there's a few things you need to do to paint that picture. Number one, you need to what I call show and tell. So show a tell. lot of writing, they tell you, Angela's a writer, probably like show, don't tell. Yes. I say through that. <laughs> Show and tell, make it super clear. Head, head everyone over the head with it when it comes to marketing. So you wanna show and tell why this is a great uh, career path for them and why they'll progress. So the way you show that is by having like a really polished brand and having a really professional landing page. Um, you show your brand everywhere. You show, you show yourself on the page or your team on the page so that the candidate envisions them. They say, wow, they're wearing uniforms. Wow, like uh, that's a great place to, to be. And then you tell them and you tell them the things that you can offer. And I think a lot of folks get stressed out because they're like, oh, they're going to want health benefits. No, what they want is for you to tell them, hey, what is what are the career project uh, career trajectories and um, opportunities here? Hey, what's learning and development look like here? And you don't need to have like the, the greatest system in the world. If you ha you can have a once a month check in. That's a that's a career trajectory. You can have a path where you can move from a technician to a lead technician over time if they hit X, Y, and Z. That's a mm -hmm. career trajectory. You can, and then you can do things like you can offer pay time off or you can offer quarterly team get togethers and that stuff works. So level three is, is what I call show and tell. Show that you're polished, show that you're a, like a stable, strong, growing company and then tell them how they can grow with you. Even if it's for a seasonal role, say at the end of the season, always try to prioritize giving full-time offers for the best employees. Who knows? You don't have to. You might. Someone might leave, or you might have a new opening for the for the spring yeah. season. And now all of a sudden, people can see themselves. Wow! If I do really well for this holiday late season or for the snow removal season, there might be a spot in it for the like landscape architecture or whatever the service you do, whatever your main service is, or whatever your uh, different seasonal services. So that's that's me blabbing. But I see those three levels like. From the business owner point of view, about the about the candidate, and then about the candidate and their growth is level three that we're seeing really hit. Mm. That is so important. It is a different culture right now, and that's what people want. Like um, you first described it as winning. Um, you know, like tell me how I can win, not only win mm. in the moment, but how I can win long term. That they can see themselves in in the win, like that you're painting the picture of winning for them and what that looks like. Yeah. People, everyone, people just want to win. People want to do well. And if you can paint that path and make it clear for them, then they're going to say for maybe even a dollar or a few dollars less an hour, I'll take that path. That's like clear and going to have support and something mm -hmm. that's going to be a grind because like folks know, and, and, and we've seen it a bunch, especially with um, hiring as of late, uh, that that like differentiation really, really, really makes a difference. So I think those are kind of like the two, uh, two of the big takeaways as of late is like the data on what type of job ads hit and how you need to adjust them to make sure you're getting a lot of candidates top of funnel. And then once you've got the job ad, how do you communicate to the candidate what their growth path is through subtle things like having a careers page um, and talking about your growth trajectory mm. and it's, and, and I think a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I need all this. I need to build all this stuff. Not really. No, like you have a you have a quarterly or once a month uh, growth meeting with with your team, which is good anyways. And you spin up a landing page and you're there. Uh, gosh, I love all that. Um, I could get more head spinning of, yeah, the winning and stuff. <laughs> um, 
Show not tell. That's that's funny. You know, you probably heard a lot of that as an author. <laughs> yeah, you was were you, were, when I said show and tell, were you like, no, 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 that's not what they. That's not. <laughs> that's not I was they, like, how do you know that? <laughs> oh, that was my biggest struggle in writing a book. Like, I thought I was a great writer, a professional, whatever, until I um, were with you know <clears throat> was with a writing professor and very strong editors, and yeah, constantly in the beginning, the developmental editor. Show not tell. Show not tell. What do you mean? <laughs> I am telling. Don't tell me what to show. <laughs> That's what I would say. That's why I cannot be a writer. I'm a little too direct for for being a, a writer that people can listen to. <laughs> oh, it was definitely one of um, the most humbling and mm. growth experiences of my life because the entrepreneur side of me, the type A leader, um. Uh, I, I mean, I hate to, I'm like admitting stuff about myself, like always thought it was right, or, you know, thought that, and it is extremely humbling. I went through a year long, very great, um, just incredible editors, but having someone tell you over and over, it's wrong. And your writing is bad. Like, this is bad. And being able to listen to that and take that feedback. But yes, we said it and it was almost like trauma in my head. <laughs> It's, show not tell. It's so it's cool. cool. Um, I know we were talking about leverage before, and the fact that you've like created something that is forever there and creates love. Every time someone picks it up, you do no additional work, and they get all the learnings from you. It's so powerful. So even though I'm sure it's super hard and humbling, and like I'm sure you're pulling your hair out at certain points, it's like isn't it great that you that you had all that input and feedback so that what you created was so strong so that now every time someone picks it up, they're getting that much more value from it. I don't know. I, I just think, I think about that all the time and anything we create that has leverage and scale, like a system, it's like spending a little bit more time and making it really dialed will pay dividends down the line for all the folks using it. Yeah. Thank you. That is, and that is true. Like if you're going to do it, something like that, something like the things and processes you're creating, like it is worth the effort that it is really good. Mm -hmm. You've really gotten the feedback, dialed it in, dug deep in it. And it's not just, I mean, just something you're putting out there, but but it's something you can really leverage in all those points. So that's, that's kind of a good parting point. Um, like I said, we could talk about this forever. I cannot believe that time is up because oh all this people stuff, I'm like, um, so, so many takeaways, owners, um, that if, you know, th this people space has changed, it's evolved, we've learned how important it is that, you know, take these things to heart, whether you're doing it yourself or whether you're getting help um, from people who have figured it out, that, you know, these are two really important parts in it and um, save yourself from yourself. <laughs> Save yourself from yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's worth it for what it'll do from your, for your business. And I promise you, it's the best thing you can do for your own energy is to surround yourself with the right team. Yeah. And one, one thing that, that we do, um, like obviously hire bus is for you as the business owner to give to candidates and your own employees to understand where they fit and how to work with them. But what we offer for folks is a free assessment for business owners so they can take it and they can learn about themselves. And like, for me, I learned that I am very low in criticality, which is something that I love about myself because I kind of can create a rah-rah culture and I believe in people and I can create like that visionary rallying, but I am not good at pointing out or making a decision when we might need to move on from someone or when we might need to make a tough decision that's overly critical. Like sometimes I, I can believe too much in a way that that I need to save myself for myself. So yeah. it's really interesting as a business owner to take this assessment and, and understand a little bit more about yourself, what you agree with, what you maybe disagree with, and then who you want on your team. And so if you want to take it, you can go to hirebus.com slash free. And it's like, you know, it usually costs money, but for, for everyone, every business owner, you take it for free and we're happy to like, we'll send you the results and we can go over it with you. So you can just at a minimum learn about yourself and oh. see what type of people to surround you with in your business. Oh, I love that. And that is the first step in learning about yourself. So we'll make sure and put that in the show notes. Well, each week we sign off to our guests with a challenge. We know that growth happens on the other side of our comfort zone. 
And so the challenge to all of our audience is what is one thing that you need to do this week to get uncomfortable? And we're going to start with you, Dan. What's one thing you need to do? Okay. Well, two, I'm going to do a personal one because Angela knows that I just got shoulder surgery. And so I've been snoozing and I've given myself like a, a green light to snooze in the morning because I have shoulder surgery and can't work out. So even though I can't work out as I usually do, I am no longer going to be a lazy snoozer in the morning. So that's my, that's my, that's my first, uh, growth thing, even if I can't go to the gym, other thing. So that's number one. Um, I think number two is around, um, is around teaching. So I I've, I've been doing a fair bit of like content lately and I want to make sure that what we are, what we're putting out there for everyone is, is good for every business at every level. And so I want to make myself uncomfortable and not just put content out there for like folks that are seven figures plus in businesses, but some of the folks that might be at different growth stages so that we can serve our mission, which is to help small business owners get the right people in the right seats. Um, and I've just been reflecting on some of the content we've been putting out lately, and it's been like a little hyper-targeted to maybe bigger businesses. And so I wanna make sure we're serving everyone and like yeah. doing what we set out to do, following our mission. So that's that's one thing that I've been reflecting on this week a little bit, is making sure that we're truly supporting every Everybody. Oh, I love that. And one in, since you did one in each area, I'm going to do. Um, uncomfortable is mine's going to be physically in that I need to really get uncomfortable in all of my workouts. Like I need mm. to, I'm going to push myself more that feels uncomfortable. Um, I used to be doing more uncomfortable intervals. I don't love running. I like walking, sprinkling in running intervals. And I don't. <clears throat> It's not uncomfortable anymore. So going to make myself uncomfortable in every workout. And then the second, um, you said content and I kind of shifted mine. I always say I'm going to put out, I'm going to put out more content. I'm going to put out more content. And then this AI thing has sort of changed what that looks like. And um, I think I'm always making excuses of we're going to get this better. So um I'm going to let my team hold me accountable for the amount that we are getting out there in a good way. Like, uh, I'm going to time block it. We're going to get it out. We're going to refine, you know, I'm going to, we're going to create it. We're going to create a process for refining it and then unleash it. I love that. I love that. And then unleash it too. align with the brand. Unleash yeah. it. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Dan. Such valuable content. Love talking about people. Everyone who joined, thank you so much. Continue to help us share, like, subscribe, share the podcast with others. And what is one thing you need to do to get uncomfortable with this, this week? We'd love to hear from you. See you next week. Thanks, Angela. Bye, everybody.